Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and today I have my wonderful wife here with me that she's going to say hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. And uh, we're just going to be studying the Word of God together, and we're looking actually into Psalm 73. We got intrigued by that uh, psalm because it's a beautiful psalm. And if you really want to know the difference between walking holy and the concept of God's holiness and the world, you know, Asaph gives us a good picture. He is tremendous. I think he wrote about 12 songs in the book of Psalms. So he's, uh, he was a songwriter. And um, if you want to say something, you know, they say that a person can sing a message in 10 minutes and some preachers can say it an hour. Amen. It's just straight up. And um, so anyway, we're just going to get in. And we're looking at Psalms 73, and this is part one. So we're going to be looking at the entire psalm. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So hang in there. Don't, uh, don't leave. If you have to move on, we'll make sure you come back and listen to the rest of it because it is rich. And today we're looking at God is the strength of my life. He's the strength and my portion forever. God is my strength and my portion forever. And what a wonderful title it is. Amen. Um, we was just intrigued by this whole scripture. And we just want to share, share our hearts today of um, what this scripture means. Not only what it actually means, but also what it means to us. Because it is a powerful, powerful scripture. Yeah, and as we looked at it, you know, we just couldn't help but saying, wow, this, this word is today. This word is for us today, and so we want to share it with you. So God is the, my strength and, and my portion, portion forever. forever. You know, the book of Psalms is divided into parts. So this is actually the third part. When we're looking into Psalm 73, it is the third part of the Psalms, and it's written by Asaph. And what's interesting is that um, the third part of Asaph gives us warning against the temptation of prosperity contrast to the holiness of God's way. And so Asaph is the author, and uh, he's the son. He was the son of a chief Levite, and he was in the administration of King David. So remember, King David had a whole uh, tabernacle full of worship. And Asaph was one of the leaders. He was one of the leaders. And it's interesting that his name means gather or collector. collector. Wow. And if anybody knew how to collect his thoughts and what he wanted to say was Asaph. He was a musician. But I think something happened to him. Mm. He was in the tabernacle. Mm. He was employed in the tabernacle. Mm. He had holy heritage. His heritage was holy because... He was, the, he was the son of a chief musician, someone under the administration of King David. And, you know, as a son, I could imagine maybe he looked out the tent once in a while and saw people, and maybe his thoughts began to be bothered. And that happens to us wow. when we turn our of eyes course. away of course. from the things of God. You know, the mental uh, difficulties arising from the temporal prosperity of the wicked and the adversity of the righteous under the government of God. Now this psalm is related closely to Psalms 37 and 49 as far as the contents are concerned. And uh, we do see that some things begin to arise. Well, let's talk about the first one in, in be, you know, because we're going to go to... to uh, we're, we're looking at the false perceptions of yes. the rich and famous. This is, this is the first part of this psalm, which I was praying, I was mm -hmm. praying um, mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. about it, and it just really gave me so much to think about. Wow. So much. A false perception can go a long way. You know, the Bible tells us that the God of this world has blinded the, 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 the minds of unbelievers. Well, the word there is perception. And if you have a wrong perception of God and the word, you're going to have a wrong perception of life. And that means just, just look out in the streets, the way people act. To tell me they're, not, they're, they're living under a false 
perception. Mm. Well, let's look at verse 1. It says, um, let me just read it from where I, where I am. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Well, th I like, because I'm using the, uh, the, the Jewish Christian Bible. Is that the one you're using? The Jewish contemporary? Mm -hmm. Well, the Christian Bible. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Ju the Jewish complete Bible. Complete, complete, yes. It says yeah. how good God is to Israel, <coughs> to those who are pure in heart. I mean, that is the first thing. So understand that in order for us to have a pure heart, we have to have also a pure perception, which comes from the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Well, what's interesting is... That word good is the picture of a house that is surrounded with grace, mm. beauty, mm. love, health, and prosperity. Something that is functional. Wow. That's, wow. that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. How about Matthew chapter 5, verse 8? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So here, he understood something about God. I mean, he knew more about God than he do, knew about the world. He said, you know, God is good mm. all the time. God is good. And we know that things that are good, it's always surrounded by something either beautiful, something something pleasant to look at, something, Absolutely. something that makes you feel full. Yes, it does. And look, look, look at this. The word good has to do with grace, number one. He understood grace. Mm -hmm. He said God is graceful to those who belong to him. And when you feel good, you love him. Amen. Then you're beautiful because if we talk about beauty, we talk about love, healthy, prosperity. Now, folks, God has no problem with prosperity. But remember, what we said earlier was that when we put prosperity before the holiness of God in his way, that's where, that's where the trouble lies. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So, so we, we see from the Psalms, right, from the, from the top, from the very beginning, is that he's looking at God in his whole and what he has done. To, with, with and for Israel. In the tabernacle. And, and he's saying that even for the, those that have a clean heart. Well, that's, you know what? That's the key here because, it's, you know, we have these verses uh, talking about good, but it's against man's temptation when, when, the, when the, uh, your eyes turn away from mm. that which is good. Mm. You're tempted. But ev in every age, God's people have always questioned whether God can do this. <laughs> you have people like that. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was reading Psalm 78 uh, yesterday, meditating and praying through that. And verse 19 and 20, the word can is used three times, people referring to God. Can he do this? Can he? Well, God can do anything, but we have to be careful when we look at the world and measure and measure our joy and godliness with the world standards. Not right. God's. Well, I just want to say something, go back. We talked, and you read it, that, that the mental di difficulties arising from this was a temporal prosperity of the wicked. He kept looking at the wicked, mm -hmm, and something mm -hmm, happened in his mm -hmm, mind. Mm -hmm. And even though he, he knew God is good, yes. something was happening in his mind. So let's go to verse 2, and it says, But as for me, I lost my balance. <laughs> my feet nearly slipped. Wow. wow. There's a lot to say there, right? Well, here's a good picture. I think the picture says it. Mm. I think all of us at one time or another consider, you know, sin and God because we, we're learning. Mm -hmm. But one thing I learned is like some people, they study more the devil than they do God. Wow. And we really should be studying God <laughs> more than we study the devil because if we know how, that God is good, we definitely know that the devil is bad. That's right. <laughs> God, listen, listen. I learned one thing, especially studying the Word of God. I don't need to study sin. I need to study holiness. I need to study who He is because everything that God is, right, the world ain't. That's true. And so when we sit down, if we're going to sit down and consider God, then we'll know what sin is. But when we get to that place where He was starting to question, right. it was sin in God. and God. And that's the whole thing with this verse of Scripture because it says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had, had um, well nigh slipped. Wow. And so, of course, the first thing that we look at is that 
um, it's our feet, like literally our feet. And this is not what he was talking about. He was talking about um, our physical feet slipping from under us and we're falling down. He was talking about a mindset, just like you discussed, just like you mentioned a few minutes ago about the mental state that he was in. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that the word slipping has to do with something that is poured out like liquid or like the blood of an animal and a sacrifice. Mm. So, so here what he was saying, and actually, the, and folks, I don't want to offend anyone, but when you go into the ancient Hebrew, okay, you will find the word penis there. Mm. Now, Right? I mean, yeah. that's not a bad word, but it's because there's something waste being poured out. Mm. And this is what they meant. This is the thought. A lot of people say, wait a minute, what are you studying? I'm studying, I'm going down to the root. I'm going down to the root word, where it comes from. And that's their thought, that when they went to, to urinate, they were urinating waste. And so he says, I almost wasted myself out. I was pouring myself out, mm. and I became like waste. Wow. Like an animal that was sacrificed. I was sacrificing myself thinking about this. Be very careful. Well, verse you know, three. Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Before we go to verse three, you All know, right. I was looking up um, the the Hebrew words there, the the three Hebrew letters there, and and it also took me to um, mm. teeth, mm -hmm. mouth, and door, and and the and the word teeth there means to be consumed or destroyed. Um, the word mouth there means to be s to speak, open, or word. And the door, is, of course, is a pathway to something. A dimension, um, different dimension. That we enter to. <laughs> and, and I started meditating on that. And, and what, what I got from that was that how many times do we allow the word of God that was spoken to us, over us, um, to, to uh, I guess... Um, I'm trying to find the word, like, um, be um, nullified, nullified, nullified mm -hmm. in our lives when we open the door to unbelief and the doctrines of men. Well, check this out before we move on. He says, but as for me, it's, it's, it means this, watch this. He says, and I, who so confidently now trust in God and believe that he is good, was formerly in a far different state of mind. Mm -hmm. I was slipping. Mm -hmm. Now he knew, listen, he didn't slip completely away, right. but he began to pour out. Mm -hmm. And his mind, watch this, these, these thoughts that were coming into mm -hmm. his mind, mm -hmm. God says, is waste. That's right. And you're allowing unbelief. To enter. And you're allowing that what you see to get in the way of who I am. That's right. And the word well nigh means like nothing. I was slipping away into nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you know that thoughts that are against God's word are to God nothing? Garbage. That's why they use the word to pour out like a person is urinating. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. So, folks, watch what you think. Verse 3 says, When I grew envious mm. of the arrogant and saw how the wicked prosper." I, now, now he was not just thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Now his thoughts were growing, and they were growing to make him envious. Mm. Remember that. How many times have we looked mm -hmm. like that? <laughs> yes, right. Uh, you know, he's got the house. He's got the car. He's got this. He's got nice rings. You know, if we're, if we're honest about the word of God, I mean, God's word doesn't lie. I mean, if we're honest about these thoughts that we have, we look just like that. Just, of many, course. On many occasions. On many occasions. When we see the wicked prosper. That's right. And he said the wicked. But we're going to get into that. Remember that my thoughts grew. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, watch your thoughts, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be teaching when we finish this whole thing on God, your thoughts. Maybe mm -hmm. we, we'll do it together. God, your thoughts, because they grow. Do you know this morning I'm laying there and all of a sudden all these thoughts come into my mind? I said, let me get up. Of course. And I heard something very, very subtle, but yet it was very powerful. 
and it's, and I knew and I knew it was from Proverbs 4 23 I wasn't even thinking about it but the Holy Spirit knows what I needed mm -hmm. and he put in my mind guard your thoughts, thoughts. Amen. Guard your thoughts. for out of it flows the issues of life you know <laughs> there are so many times that I'm that I'm praying and I'm sitting I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm praying and I'm just I'm reading the word and all of a sudden my my thoughts go somewhere else mm -hmm. go on other people go mm -hmm. on other things and I actually have to do that I have to say Lord help me mm. help me mm -hmm. to guard my thoughts mm -hmm. to take these thoughts captive that's right that's right because I'm not I'm not steadfast on him my mind is not steadfast on him at that point at that time and sometimes we have to bring it back Bring it back <laughs> under captivity. Bring it back. Wow, I like and, that. <laughs> and, and, just, and just hold on to his promises. And then as you start to worship, as you start to talk to God, then you, then, then you come back. You know? absolutely, absolutely. Then you come back. Bring it but back. Bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. But, you know, that's, that's, that's the way it is because we're human. You know, and we have, and especially women, we have so much stuff going on. We wake up. With thoughts of what we're gonna do. I didn't say that. You said that. I right? said it. Sometimes we're laying in the bed before we wake up, and we're thinking about what we got to do the next day, and and so we have to bring those thoughts under captivity because you know what? If we don't, we we don't spend the quality time that we want to with God. That's right. And you know what? <clears throat> Let's look at the word envious here. You know, it has to do. With the horizon of the sun, you know how the sun rises up, it brings light, but it also, when it, it, people don't gather, excuse me, people don't gather seed in the night. They gather seed during the daytime. So the sun rises, the gathering of the seeds, and it has a thought of birds building their nest. Why did he grow envious? Because his thoughts were building a nest in his mind. Mm. You ever mm. seen a bird build a nest? They fly, mm. they get a little piece of this, a little piece of that. Right? They'll pick up a twig. Right? <laughs> They'll pick up a piece of paper. They'll pick up anything. Mm -hmm. And they build their nest because they're going to have a home there to grow their little young ones. Wow. But watch your mind. Watch your thoughts because they're coming slowly. You know, something funny just came to my mind. Remember that episode on Andy Griffith when <laughs> they were going into a cave or something and Barney was talking to his, yeah, his yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and he said something about... Um, you have to watch yourself because those bats or something will the moths, the, the moths. They, they'll plant they'll plant little um, <laughs> eggs in your yeah. in, in your in your head and you'll go and, crazy and you'll go crazy, you know. So guard your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> the little moths that fly up on your head and, and the little <laughs> seeds, those little seeds that gather up in your head and drive grow. you crazy, they drive you crazy, drive you nuts. Well, you know the whole concept here is it's slow, it's slow. It's a slow process how the enemy weeds mm. into your garden. Mm. He plants those weeds. I have a lot of weeds, man, I'll tell you. I, <laughs> I have to go out there back there and get rid of those weeds. I am not a lover of chopping grass, but I have to do it. All right, now. Now, you know what's interesting? No, what happens when you don't? It grows. It grows, what, and it starts to take control yes, it does. of the atmosphere. Yes, it, it does. It starts to, to entangle itself around the fence. Yes, it, it does. It starts to entangle itself around uh -oh. the, 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 the storage bin back there. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. So, so we, have to, we have to chop them things down. Yep. We have to chop it down sometimes at the root so and that it, it yeah. doesn't grow again. Right. And sometimes if you don't get to the root, it'll keep growing, but you better keep chopping it. That's right. You know... It has to we, be pruned. We've been in our house for 18 years, and we, I've always done the grass, you know, things like that. Well, I got this guy. He came around. He says, I cut grass, and finally I said, okay, go ahead. I'll pay you. He did it. He did a good job, right? Mm -hmm. He said, you know, come back in two weeks. He didn't come back in two weeks. Yeah, I know. He came back six weeks later, and when he knocked on the door, I said, where you been? I said, you're supposed to be here. I had to do it myself. And, folks, let me tell you something. Stop depending on people to chop down mm. the things in your life mm. that you know you got to do yourself. Wow. Wow. All right, anyway. Yeah, running here, <laughs> running there, running everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, when God has the answer right in his word. Let's go to verse 3. For when their death comes, it is painless, and meanwhile, their bodies are healthy. Oh, man, you know, wow. look at the perception in his mind. He had a false perception. 
He had a false perception mm -hmm. of strength. He had a false perception of strength. He looked at them and said, man, they're even strong when they die. Mm -hmm. Not true. No matter how rich you are, you get sick, you get sick. Well, you know what's interesting? He said the bands of death, actually. This, the, the, the King James. Yeah, the King James, the bands of death. Now, watch this. The word has to do with binding the hands or the feet as with a chain. Mm -hmm. He says, man, they, they're so rich that death doesn't even bind them. They keep going. And their strength is firm. And their strength is firm. Watch yourself. And they don't have a worry. Man, you know what? They have plenty of worries. I know. Just look but, in the world. But when we look at it, mm -hmm. when, we're, when we look at it like that, you know, because how many, how many, people, how many people do we see, um, you know, like the rich and famous, right, that they're out there and they're enjoying their life and they're going... They're going out, and they have the boats, and they got the yachts, and they got this, that, and another. And you go, they do not have a worry. They do not have a worry in the world. They have everything they need, mm. everything they want, anything they desire. They do not have a worry. Not a worry. But you know what? they need to worry about is the fact that if they don't have Christ in all of that that they have, and desire and want. And no matter what, that's death is some, coming. That's something to think about. Yes, and death is coming. I've seen rich people, and you see them even on TV, they, they lay in the grave, and you can't take your riches with them. You know, you can't take your riches with you. They, they, they put all kinds of stuff in the caskets, you know, like, you know, this is gonna accompany them in the death. Look at the Egyptians. The Egyptians used to do that. Mm -hmm. Do you know the kings, when they went and they die, all their servants, they used to serve them, go into the grave with them. Wow. And all their possessions, gold and all kinds. That's why people like to go in, and uh, and to, uh, to look, you know, to dig into, into the pyramids to find gold because they find gold, but they also find other bodies there because you know why? They believe in the after death that the king is, is living and that his servants will be with him and their gold. What a lie. Wow. And so they, they actually believe that they're dying in their strength. We send them off good. <laughs> we, we, we send them off with gold and silver and their chariots and their boats and their servants. What a lie. Wow. Watch this now. Go ahead. And verse, and verse 5 says, And they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Wow. Well, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? We're looking at a false concept of rich people. There you go. Ah, they have no place, they have no trouble. Well, let's look at the word trouble. The word trouble has to do with a labor that causes grief, pain, or weariness. You know, they have no pain. That's what he was starting to say. They look good. They look so good in his eyes. They said, they have no pain. They're happy, no trouble, no grief. They have no worries. Let me tell you something. When you don't have God, you're not walking in God's way. Your riches are going to bring you a lot of grief. You know, I, I'm, I'm reminded of um, John 16, 33, when Jesus said, mm. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be untaunting, be, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished my victory abiding. That was from the Amplified Bible. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so our, um, you know, the, the troubles that we, that we see and that we have, other people have it too. You know, but his concept was that these people were not having any problems, that they do not have any problems. That's right. That they are not plagued like other people, but they are. They are. And even more so because they did not have God. That's right. And you know, the wicked, those who are not following God, their riches are spent on their own schemes. It's violent. And they do violence. Well, let's look at verse 6. So for them, pride is a necklace. And violence clothes them like a robe. Mm. There's no way to get out of it. You know what pride means? To swell up. Mm. to be self-exalted. But I'll tell you what, 
It's because, you know, because pride, you know, the pride of violence, you got to watch that every day. You become prideful, you become self-exalted. Mm -hmm. And violence, you, listen, how many times you see movies and, you know, the kid is rich, comes from a rich family, and what happens? He does all kind of evil. Mm. I can do what I want. I'm rich. Mm -hmm. Watch it. I've seen I've seen pastors like that. They mm. have money, mm. and they do whatever they want, and they wind up falling into all kinds of sin and trouble. Yes, yes. Especially the godly. You look at the world, man, I want that. Oh, man, I love that. I want that. Well, let's look at the word pride there. The word pride basically means the strength of a foot that lifts up high. <laughs> All the elevation of oneself to a great position. Mm. Oh, yeah, you have that. Let me get that position. If I can just get that position, I'll be good. And when they get that position, they're not going to be good. They're going to be evil because they're going to oppress those who are under them. Mm. You know what? In order for you to be oppressed... You need oppressors. But the world has been sleeping at the wheel, one of my friends said, and trying to compute that, my friend, is like trying to compute pi. <laughs> wow. Incalcul incalc incalculable. Can't do it. So watch pride. Well, let's look at the last verse today. And their eyes peep out through folds of fat. Evil thoughts overflow from their hearts. <laughs> Let's look at their filthy <laughs> eyes that <laughs> pop out. You know, I, I I wrote something here because I was looking at. Um, I imagine someone looking through their eyes, squinting. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. looking deceitful and mm -hmm. plotting and Scheming. planning what mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. what the next thing was, um, and to exceed their um, imaginations or their hearts, they are more than can be conceived of. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. Wow. Or they transgress by the imaginations of the heart, which are evil, that are continual. Wow. Continual. Continual. Their eyes popping out. Their eyes popping out. Well, let's look at what the word means. Wow. Now, remember that the scripture says their eyes peep out mm. through folds of fat. Evil thoughts overflow their heart. So let's look at the word. The word stand out has to do with a man lying down or squatting to issue out something. Something soiled with excrement. Something filthy. Mm. Uh, in reference is going to the bathroom. Go ahead. Going to the bathroom. Squatting. Mischief. Let's plot. But God says when you plot, it's like excrement. Mm. Mm. In other words, you're crapping something out. The word crap is not a bad word, folks. Actually, the word crap was after the inventor who invented the toilet bowl, crapper. <laughs> but also the junkyards, they have these corners that they call the crap corner. They throw all the, st all the stuff they don't need there. And so we got to be careful that our eyes are not peeping out, mm -hmm. that we're not doing something evil, because when we do that, God says, you're acting like waste. Mm. And that's what he says. I almost became like waste. And, and I guess the most important thing, I guess, that we want to leave today is that um, when we're thinking about those things that we see around us, those are false f perceptions mm -hmm. because what may look like it's it's great to some people when we see the end, and we will talk about that coming tomorrow, about what God, what God shows him because he had his mind set on the rich, the famous, the, 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 the healthy. Mm -hmm. He had his mind set on things that were not of God, and so... We need to take, we need to guard our hearts. We need to guard our minds. Guard your thoughts. And you know, 
when we look at the fruit of people who are, high, you know, they're living high, and, you know, it looks like they're not weakened by any toil, they're not weakened by anything that they do, and we have to see that God is watching what we do. Well, we're going to continue this. God bless you, and God thank you, you for hanging in there with us, but uh, this is what we're doing, and so have a wonderful day, and remember, guard your thoughts, and don't look at the world, look at God. And remember that God is your strength. Amen. And your portion forever. God bless. God bless.